I am Genghis Khan. They bring Jamuka before me, the friend of my childhood who has grown into a great chief. Gur Khan, they call him. But now he is in chains. I offer him a place at my side, but the proud man refuses, declaring there can only be one sun in the sky. To honor him, I have him killed by snapping his back, without spilling a drop of his noble blood. I am Genghis Khan. <laughs> Betrayal and loss. The kingdoms I've torn down and the vast empire I've built are made of blood and bounty, but mostly of betrayals and loss. Make no mistake, I love plunder as much as any man. The piteous cries of the fallen are music in my ears. Their women are my chattel and their proud cities are ash. These things fill my heart with fierce joy. But if it hadn't been for betrayal and loss, none of this would have ever occurred. My father, Yisuge, named me Temujin. It means blacksmith. He and my mother, Hoelun, expected me to be a forger of things, of people and tribes. And so this empire is in honor of them. But he was poisoned by the Tatars when I was still a boy, and my mother and my siblings were cast out to die. But we did not die. We lived on wild game and berries. The wind and the winters hammered me into an arrowhead of sharp iron. My older half-brother, Bekter, claimed to lead our pitiful clan, but my brother Khasar and I killed him before he could marry my mother to cement his place. We were captured and enslaved by the Taiichi Ud, our former allies, but a guard favored me and helped me escape. When I became Khan, that guard's son became one of my generals. So too did Jelme and Boorchu, who joined me then. I do not forget those who are truly loyal to me. I found a home with the Karait. Their chief, Togriel, had betrothed his daughter, Berta, to me when my father still lived. She remained my queen our entire lives and oversaw my other wives and concubines. The three Merkits stole her from me but I won her back. I made war with them and many others, gaining power among the Mongols. My wild years had taught me to find any weakness in my foes. Theirs was a reliance on nobles at the expense of everyone else. I opened my ranks to all men of merit, promoting only those who performed well and swore their loyalty, regardless of their blood. On a tide of acclaim I swept across the land, forging the tribes into the greatest military force the world has ever seen. One arrow alone can easily be broken, but a sheaf of arrows is almost impossible to break. They named me Chinggis Khan, ruler of the universe, and I would create the greatest empire in the history of the world. Nothing could stand before us, neither army nor city wall. We turned on the fat Chinese kingdoms to the east and south. First the Jin, then the Shishia collapsed. Our cavalry were too fast, our composite bows too strong. We played their weaknesses against each other, bribing and assassinating officials and terrorizing the land. We put entire cities to the sword and demanded loyalty from the survivors. In this way, we swept west to the Khwarazmian cities of Persia. Here we perfected our invasions. Bukhara and Samarkand fell, and the word of our conquests spread across the world. They called me the Accursed One, as if I were the only general in the world massacring people. But many slaughtered others for their own glory and ideals. The only difference? I did it best. We pushed further into Georgia and the lands of Kievan Rus, my great generals Subitai and Jebet taking 20,000 men north and the remainder following me south. Subatai was my cunning strategist, Jebe my fierce cavalry commander. Crimea fell, and they encircled the Caspian Sea, returning to our homelands through the Russians at the Battle of Kalka River and the Afghans in their mountains. Theirs was the greatest single military campaign the world has ever seen. Subatai and Jebe gained more land, 
won more battles, and destroyed more cities than any others known to history. And they returned to us with reports of even fatter cities and greener pastures beyond. But we turned back to the east and south, where the Tanguts and Jin and Western Xia needed another lesson in the price of betrayal. I executed the Tangut royal family and drove through to the coast, cracking the Song dynasty apart like an egg. Riches beyond belief were ours. My camps of wives swelled in size and I birthed a thousand sons. But I had no desire to rule this far-flung empire as a tyrant. I did not dictate how the conquered would live under my rule. I forced no gods upon these people. Quite the contrary. I encouraged them to worship however they pleased. I sat and dined with sages and philosophers and learned from them, and I believe they also learned from me. Among the conquered, I respected the brave, the strong, the cunning, and welcomed them into my army and my court. We did the same with the Persians and the Tatars and the Chinese as we had done with our own. Those men and women of quality who would take my oath were given the right to rule. Even their great warriors became my generals, such as my former enemy Jeb, after he withstood a cavalry charge and felled my horse from under me. Age finally claimed me. Against all odds, I did not perish on horseback, battle blade in hand. My exit from the world stage was far less dramatic than my life had been an unrelenting decline from an unknown ailment. The great Khan's light faded and went out. My empire I passed to my sons, but soon only one of them ruled all others, my third son, Urgadai. His son, Kublai Khan, would become famous for his temple of Xanadu, and, like me, would be buried somewhere unknown with all the riches of the East, so secretly that his tomb will never be found. I am Chinggis Khan, the universal ruler, Temujin, the blacksmith of history. My code was simple. It was never enough that I succeed. All others must fail. I am Genghis Khan.